Well, I already said this would be my third presentation now at uh, Campus Campus, and I think this one will be the best one. <laughs> uh, so Dorothy is the project that I spent a considerable amount of time on. In fact, the first commit was back in March 29, 2013. And it started off as just your very basic doc file thing. You have like an RC file where I have some exports, some aliases, and whatnot. And it's evolved since then to now have uh, over nearly 3,000 commits now. That's what the contribution graph looks like. And kind of each spike is like when someone else starts using it. Uh, and now it's become a full on ecosystem that enables people to get started on new machines really quick. It allows you to switch from different shells so you're not stuck with just bats or bee shell or fish or new shell. You can experiment and go between them and keep all your configuration and your commands. Uh, it runs on everything, so Windows, um, most, a lot of Linux distributions as well. Uh, we can see all the ones that people actually use it on. Uh, and here we can see the ones that we actually officially support and the CI type code as well. Uh, so the appeal of this uh, we'll go into first, though, I'm going to shout out my GitHub sponsors. So thank you to Andrew Esmith, Kanatra uh, Metapath, Rob Morris, Sentry, ProCub, Balsa, and Syntax. Without their support, I wouldn't be presenting this because it wouldn't be done. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go up to the notes. So the reason why it's evolved over, over all this time, it may actually be something that we've observed here at this conference. There's been several issues where people have got a new machine and then things haven't worked with that and set things up or things haven't been configured correctly. Uh, or it's not just with the operating system, it could be with an ecosystem like Node, Python, Rust, Ruby, uh, Go, uh, or a, Maybe they're missing a package for one of those ecosystems that's the wrong version, uh, configuring the machines, or even maybe they've gone from Windows to Mac and now they don't know what to do, or they've gone from Mac to Ubuntu. And there's many different differences, even between Linux distributions or just like Mac to, to Linux. So it's convenient to be able to have like a consistent experience travel. So these are problems I know well. Uh, I've been a Mac user quite some time, but then I got Raspberry Pis for my own server. Uh, I've actually remoted into one of them at home, and there's currently 52 terabytes attached to a Raspberry Pi 4 <laughs> running as a shared box at home, currently same thing. And then there's also a seed box and a DNS box and all the rest, all powered primarily by Dorothy. Uh, but that's like when you get to the advanced uh, side of it. Dorothy is useful even as the most basic user and someone who's interacting with the terminal. So my machines, no matter the platform or architecture, so going from x86 to ARM or even RISC-V, it works on RISC-V, I got sent the dev port, and it works fine on it. Uh, so no matter the architecture or the platform, everything will be installed consistently and easily. The dev tooling such as compilers and environment variables are configured correctly for the machine's capabilities. So, well, sometimes when we install something, we'll get an error that the C tooling or GCC tooling isn't configured correctly. Uh, and then we'll go to Stack Overflow, we'll see, okay, what do we need to paste into our doc file? So then we paste that and then something else breaks in the future and then we got to go. So, or we install something in and then it gives us some recommendations. Dorothy will handle all that for you. It detects what's on the machine or adjust the environment variables accordingly. So when using the machines, I have commands in configuration. I work on all of them to make my life easier. And when writing commands, I can leverage a core of hundreds of commands to make my life way easier. At this point, maybe 200 commands now in the Dorothy core. And then we have users. Uh, there's currently three very active users of Dorothy. There's probably more that I don't know about. Because we have 175 stars. We have nine people watching the repository to get notifications when anything happens. So <laughs> there's probably some people using it that I don't even um, so then they push their own configuration of commands to their own user repository. That allows easy syncing between the machines and allows others to see what their commands are and can share commands that way. All right, now, so chapter two first is what is a terminal? <laughs> uh, what is a shell? 
So how many people here would say they use the terminal every day? By a raise We've got everyone. Okay. <laughs> right. Now who here knows what a shell is? Oh, I mean we've got some people that are raising their hands. Um, now what about bass and D shell? Yeah, so it's still a good crowd. So what uh now what about dot parts? Who knows what dot parts are? Okay. Cool. Now, so just to make sure everyone's on the same page, so a terminal uh, is like an interface on the screen. Now we have a visual shell uh, for Linux that will be things like GNOME or Unity or KDE, or for a terminal interface, it'll be something like Bat or Z shell or New shell or PIP. Uh, but they're all ways to just interact with the machine. They wrap the underlying core of the operating system and give us something we can actually interact with. Uh, so Bash is born again shell. Uh, it originated just at SH, it's just shell or born. Um, and that was written a very long time ago. In fact, Bash was is as old as 1989. And the authority is mostly within that. So it's kind of interesting that uh, I've been using it so long for something that's as old as me. Um, there's a new one, one called Z Shell Mac OS, the latest Mac OS from last year. So then also this year, I uh, go by Z Shell by default, and then they use Bash version three instead of Bash version five. Uh, then there's others like this new shell. Some of the advantages of different shells is they function differently. You can get really nice order completions with some of them. So this is like this. Uh, I get really nice completions with that. Bash is like fantastic for Python because it's still like that, like POSIX compatible. There's others such as Noon, which is written in Rust, is really good for data pipelines, easily converting from Qt and from JSON as well. So it's nice to be able to use like the correct shell for the job. When we see like what Dorothy uses are doing it, we can go down, pop, 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 pop. Uh, and we've got, yeah, uh, Palma, or, sorry, Jalma uh, from Sweden uh, uses each shirt. Z shell as his login one, but he writes his commands in Bash and he's a K main, K -main user. Uh, and John B. Kenton he uses new as his login shell and he writes his commands in new. So that's one of the versatilities. We're not just stuck with one shell environment. So Dorothy uh, ended up going from just my own DOS files when I wanted to move to Fish and adopt Fish because of this great order completion. It's a great interactive shell. You have shells for scripting, which is like say Bash. We have shells for interacting with this was a great one. New shell is also good. Uh, now, however, if I had all these uh, things in my dot files, right? If I just have them in the bash rc file or a dot v z shell file, or then it's stuck to that specific shell. It's not particularly portable. There is syntax differences. So back in 2013, it was just easier. But then around 2016, I think I adopted it. So I needed to figure out a way to make it so I didn't have to rewrite every single thing. And no one else had figured this out. <laughs> so somehow I was blessed by the gods and I figured out uh, how to do it. But before we go into that, so before Dorothy, yeah, we have one large shell file, manual machine operations, they were shell specific, operating system specific, no ecosystem benefits. We had to figure everything out and we go to Stack Overflow copy and paste it, it doesn't seem we have to go back to Stack Overflow when something breaks again. For instance, like when Apple went from um, Intel to Apple Silicon, so many things broke in the terminal and people were all figuring out for, yeah. And sometimes it's just buggy implementations, minor copies and bad code. Now, new machine setup will take days, you have to install everything, figure out everything yourself, and the updates are tedious to keep the system up to date. Now with Dorothy, we get conventions by people who are very skilled in this uh, and assisted machine operating as well. Uh, cross shell support, cross operating system support, ecosystem benefits. So we figure it out once in Dorothy and it rolls out to all the users. Things like SSH and DPT, like that's also something that's broken and common by at least for me initially. So Dorothy figured it out like how to have SSH signing or DPG signing, like invalid TTY errors, <laughs> uh, and also have the memory uh, of your password if you want that. Um, so now it's like the new chain setups like 10 minutes. 
there's two commands that are like very important. One is like setup system update. This is my Mac mini at home. And just before this talk started, I ran setup system update, it's updated directly. And now it's going through and it's updating the entire system. So it's just updating everything in Homebrew. And now it's going to go through and yeah, it's just going through. Yeah, did all my fonts then. Uh, sorted out that that print page. Now it's going to Git as well. Uh, and it's just going to go through this entire ecosystem. Uh, well, I mean, all the ecosystems I care about and I've got configured, it's just going to make sure they're all up to date. If this is a new machine. I would have to set up system install and I would get a more interactive uh, configuration. I get more questions about what I want to install, uh, things like that. Whenever this updates, I'm going to get less questions. So even like for the Git one, we can see that it's correctly did my profile, my auth, my Git tool, my merge div tool, my editor. I uh, did my assigning. Uh, it does support one password even for the signing. I did enable that because I'm using SSH. Uh, and it added my SSH keys. And it's also made sure that GitHub's SSH keys are correct. You're not going to get, are you sure you want to connect to this host thing if you just import all your GitHub's SSH keys? It's defaulted there for setting up Rust as no, because I don't have any scrapes that are specific to Rust. I'll go into that more later. Now it's going through no. Uh, and it's just wiping all these dead ones from my talk yesterday. And I'll go through and I'll set up node according to my preferences. So let's get back to our talk. So, what is the term run here? Okay, we're on doc files. And how the doc files evolve, I think I've gone into that. We start off with a batch RC or a doc file configuration specific to that shell, and then we expand it. And then we have a huge headache when we want to try different. And Dorothy evolved because we figured out a way, or I figured out a way to uh, solve that problem. So, before we go into how I solved it, what are some of the things we can do with Dorothy? I just so showed you the setup system where it's updating uh, through everything here. I did set up Git, now it's going no. Now it's going to be installing all my favorite node packages that I want. Uh, it goes through all these different commands. This is my Share box server at home with the Raspberry Pi. This is get devices will get all the devices attached to that server with detailed information. This command also works in Mac OS, right? So this to get this detailed information is like 10 different commands you don't want. Uh, maybe not 10, it's more like five, but it's still a lot. And you have to know exactly how to do it. And the commands differ on different operating systems. And right here, I get so much information. I can see the file system, I can see this one's mounted. There's eight drives as part of that. This one's a Western digital drive. Uh, so get a lot, we can query it. So that's just one of the commands. We've got a whole bunch. Uh, select shell, uh, the elite easily allows us to switch our shell to go from this to that, whatever. Uh, Dorothy theme. We do have uh, themes that work across different shells. The one I'm using here is the, uh, the Oz shell, which is one I've written. Uh, we can also uh, use FastDip, which is the other one it supports by default. But these are themes that no matter which shell I'm using, it's going to be the same one. We have any issues with the internet and fetching the, uh, uh, the theme right there. So, set up system, we covered that. Actually, let me go into detail about what everything is for set up system. And feel free to like ask questions, interrupt. Uh, as we go on. So, set up system. Let me apply this. All right, so first we check if the internet's working. We ask if you want to update Dorothy. We update anything specific to the map, so there'll be things like Homebrew. Uh, or the Linux. The Linux one is a lot more interesting because we have the support for all the different varieties of things you have in Linux. So, ABK, apt, or flat pack, RPM, snap, zip, pack, and then adding app packages, removing app packages. Uh, we'll be asked if we want to update the ecosystem. Uh, yeah, so these are the upgrades. We'll even be asked 
if we want to upgrade like our U1 to your Linux, like if we want to, if we want to then it also handle like all the cleaning up as well. And for the setup Linux Raspberry, there's actually uh, this one will make sure that our Raspberry Pi firmware is up to date, the configuration is sorted, we're using the correct kernel. Uh, and there's another one that is set up Linux recovery. This enables a certain recovery mode where you can start pressing a certain hot key combination uh, and it will allow you to safely shut down the machine if it uh, completely freezes or locks up. So there's a lot of information there about how to use it. Uh, so now it's going to go through tar tarmac, snap, flat pack, room software, if we're running in install mode. Uh, yeah, task has to run our great app system. Yeah. So if we go back to setup system, now it's going to go through the ecosystem. So yes, last node, go, read, Python. Bin is anything that isn't specific to an ecosystem. Uh, so this one is kind of a little bit up, updated, but say if we're using Visual Studio Code, it's going to link the binary from an application to our uh, XMG bin home directory. So that way the code command is available to us. We don't have to immediately like install or use something more complicated. Same for any of these uh, uh, other desktop apps. So Git box is what the model is example I use this one for. And set up utils. So the set up util ecosystem, I think, is one of the most amazing things <laughs> of this. It's one of the reasons maybe just to use Dorothy in and of itself. Uh, because what it does is if we say set up util curl, this is what the curl command looks like. We get, we say the client is curl, and then we say what the APK package is, the app, the org, the brew, emerge, mix, RPM, so Fedora, uh, UR, PMI, which is Magia, uh, Wingap, which is Windows, Void, SUS. And so when we run set up, that util that curl, it's going to figure out what is available in our machine and it's going to install our preference of how to install curl on the machine based on capabilities. If there is no capability on our machine, it will prompt us if we want to install one of those capabilities uh, to install that app. So we now have a lot of utilities open. So things like J2, I don't have to figure out ever when I move from Mac to you want to how do I install them? I can just run set up dash util dash Ubuntu, and it's going to figure it out all for me. Uh, this one is even more advanced. It can download the binaries directly from the GitHub release, and we can see that we've got this five supporting here on sixty four. So the set up utils great way to uh, just level up your installer uh, experience with things that are cross compatible. Uh, across everything. And if all, if you're just curious and want to find out how the hell do I do something more specific, you just look into how I do it in setup until uh, or how all these different ecosystems work. Uh, for instance, apt, they change the repository format and how signing keys work. People are going to stack overflow to figure it out. Dorothy can do that. So with Dorothy users, they never need to worry about how the underlying tool like app changes from version to version. They can just run the set of utils and everything will just work fine. They can just care about what utilities they want to install and move on. They don't have to worry about the implementation details. The maintainers of Dorothy, mostly myself, worry about that and stuff. So another example of this is set up DNS. So this is another huge command because DNS is very complicated, uh, especially to do it on Mac and Ubuntu and the different Linux distributions. So when we run set up DNS, uh, it is going to, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. We've got the thing to <laughs> figure it out. Um, so yeah, we can select a different thing if you want. Uh, this menu selection, also Dorothy, so exit that. So set up DNS, we can go through this uh, on this machine here. 
Yeah, try and verify, okay, which DNS service do I want the system? Well, I can select something else if I want to say, I've got my Cloudflare DNS for. So there's advantages of different ones, but the point of uh, the DNS is you really want encrypted DNS. Uh, and then which DNS provider to use? I can select something else, Quad9, Cloudflare, the different ones, I've got Google, OpenDNS. In this case, I'm going with Quad9. But the way that setup DNS works uh, in the background is it knows the capabilities of each of these providers. That's why it's chosen like that. So we can know, like say this one here, Cloudflare Security or Cloudflare Malware, it supports DNS over HTTPS, DNS over TLS, and DNS script. It also has IPv6. It's going to detect the capabilities of our system and which service we're using for our DNS, and then use the best capabilities for that. So encrypted DNS is like a great free alternative to paid DNS. Yeah, all the event like privacy benefits, but without the cost and trusting a third party with your VPNs. Now uh, there is certain advantages of VPNs and just finding the IP address, but if you're just accessing HTTPS websites and you don't need a high drive, the encrypted DNS is great. Notably. The reason why I worked on the encrypted DNS was it turned out uh, one of my Ubuntu machines had a security feature where we detected the DNS queries were being intercepted. And if my DNS queries were being intercepted, um, it seems that the ISP was intercepting and changing some queries. Uh, so then encrypted DNS prevents them also from doing that. Your DNS queries are completely private. Self help and tunnels. This is actually how I access my, my uh, Sharebox server, my Raspberry Pi server, and my Mac Mini at home by using those abilities. All right, so that's set up DNS covered. All right, set up Git. Uh, we went through that earlier. Uh, SSH Pelton, this is another one. So often on our machines, it's very hard to figure out how to do SSH correctly. SSH filter will help you generate your SSH keys or even just add them. If I do add, it's going to add them. I've already saved the keys in this because it's Mac OS. It's how you can save them in the key chain. But that's all fine. These, these keys, I don't have to enter the password. If I'm SSHing into it, it prompt me for the password with the keys. I enter the password. And now it's saved in the SSH agent. I don't have to re enter the keys every single time I connect to the SSH. Box. All right. Uh, edit command. So if I want to edit Dorothy, uh, I can just do edit dot. And this is going to open up in Visual Studio Code. The way that this, but however, if I'm SSHing into something, so let's see the into Dorothy here. And now edit, let's say the readme. Whoops, if I didn't type correctly. It's going to be a little bit of a delay here. We're getting it in a different editor. So, and oh yeah, so we've got it in there. So it detects what our capabilities are of our current shell instance and will do the preference of our editor by correctly. This is done by our editor's configuration file. So, terminal editors, I've got as bin and vi. Uh, if we see the default of all the editors Dorothy supports, we've got terminal editors, so nano, neo, vim, vim, vi, micro, emacs, and, uh, and any, and GUI editors, code, atom, sublime, the edit, and text editor, text editor. And also tracking support for other ones. So that's another cool thing. I can just write edit, works across everything, very easy. Um, all right. If you also think something is cool, you can say so. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think something's shit, you can say so as well. Uh, all right. So until success, if I'm trying to connect by SSH, I can just pretend like until success, uh, and then SSH into something, and it will just keep trying again and again and again until it works. Uh, there's also another example would be like Razor, but that's more like this. All right, the secret command. This one, when I show people, it sometimes blows the mind, uh, but they may already be using another alternative, like 
fit more than how my sum total is. So to do the updates from the other talk, publishing all these NPM packages, it required access to certain keys. So when we do the foundation uh, all, which runs the script against all my NPM packages, uh, first we need to authorize with these keys. So here we've got secret and and now it's granting my NPM auth token, search login, search token, all these tokens, and it's exposing these tokens only to the command that command. It's not just saved in plain text in my doc file configuration. The secret uses my one password uh, instance. So it's fetching these tokens directly from one password. There will be a secrets.json file. So Travis GitHub access token. This is the vault ID. This is the item ID. And then this is the field ID. There is a, so with secret, with secret finance, I don't know if you want password, you'll do map. It'll ask you what mapping do you want for that uppercase token name. Then you select the vault, select the item, select the field. And then if you get, get the token, so just output it to SPDL, you can do and, and then token give it directly just for that command. So you don't have to worry about like a single command sending your N to the servers and then all your secrets and things, right? So there's no tokens at all when I run it, right? Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? Um, so yeah. And now, like this was done like ages ago, that secret command, and now, Pretty much every password manager is trying to do something like this. <laughs> so it just makes um, a lot of sense. All right, mount help mounting. Oh, that is hard. <laughs> so mounting things on Mac OS, mounting things on Ubuntu, mounting things. I haven't tried that command on Windows, but uh, yeah, mounting is one of the most difficult things I've ever done. So it's up there with the DNS stuff. It is really hard to figure out, but I figured it out, and now everyone uh, gets to benefit. Uh, so I can, so this Sharebox server uh, that has this uh, 52 terabytes, so if we do BTFS helper from the other ones, info, and then we say for this tank, we're going to get a bunch of information about this BTFS system. Also, BTFS helper, I can type BTFS helper new, it will walk me through formatting a ride as BTFS, make sure it's the correct ride. Okay, in this case, I may have gone with the filter wrong. So we'll just write BTFS helper, whoops, and back one too many. So we'll just write BTFS helper info. And then it'll give us some information about that. So I've got eight rides in a BTFS thing with like, uh, Twice redundant, so I like redundancy. So for each, so out of the 52 terabytes, half of that is redundant. Uh, so I get access to half, half. So if half the drives would fail, I still keep everything. Um, and the good thing about BTFS is like if some bits are failing, then you can just repair those bits. So this share box uh, exposes this via sync thing, and it also exposes it via sandbox. So the seed box is a different machine, and then it's accessing it via sandbox. And even on my Mac Mini, uh, if I then, I won't show you though on my Mac Mini because I'll show you my password when I show you. However, because the sandbox uh, connects via some password and authenticates with a certain user. Uh, but, right, so we've gone through, let's configure, oh, we'll, we'll ask, I'll point you, I'll focus on, the mount uh, thing. Uh, we're just waiting for the SSH connection to send that. But yeah, so I've got those eight things, and it's very stressful to manage that much data, uh, especially when it has to do everything. So there's so much like stuff in here to make sure you never screw up. And if I mount it and make sure things are mounted in the correct order, and even with the services uh, that I'm going to mount and say sync thing after the drives are mounted. Where I'm only starting the torrent server once my VPN is connected. If my VPN turns off, it's going to disconnect the torrent server, things like that. 
if I want to shut, shut down my machine, make sure everything is disconnected or turned off in the correct order as well. When I start things back up, I will make sure that that's that as well. Um, that complexity is most being a setup server command, which is a beta command. Um, but yeah, the, the power of this is incredible. Uh, so you can start up just really simple using it to install utilities to join, um, yeah, crazy stuff like that. But Mount Helper, it supports automatic mounting. So on Linux, that would be using FS tab. On Mac OS, it would be using Con. Or even, uh, yeah, mostly it's going to be Con. Um, so it will, when you mount, you can just say like auto mount or dash dash Con. And then it will set up to mount automatically, like every 15 minutes to try and remount it um, if it's not mounted. So yeah, you can see here this is information about my my drives uh, that are connected to this Raspberry Pi. So there's a whole bunch of drives and a lot of them. Um, all right. So the setup system update. Yeah, I went through and did go with Python. Now for Python, I made sure that is doing. Python 3 and Python 2 correctly. It's making sure the correct version of Pip is installed for each. It's installing PipX and Python 3, and it's installing the packages I want for PipX. Or I can specify packages for, okay, I'm going to go set up that user. So you'll see here. So for the Python configuration, I said PipX install these. Python 3, I can install those ones which are specific to Python 3. And Python 2, there's this one that's like no longer updated, but it's still very useful. So there's a lot of complexity around Python, <laughs> which we've heard about <laughs> from some people. And this, but with this, I never have to worry about that. Uh, it's all extracted away. Those details about keeping these things up to date is extracted away. And I can just focus on what I need to get. All right, HFS helper, service helper, obviously on Ubuntu, uh, or even on Mac OS, there's like things like SSH up running as your service in the background. Uh, on Ubuntu, things like Sync Thing or Sandbar, these are services as well. So, service helper will work on Mac OS and for Linux machines. So, I'm so we went into YouTube download helper. This is like another one. So, uh, just downloading videos. We've got like some little uh, helper flags here. Uh, so if I go point, point, YouTube download helper. Oh, yeah, you can see I was trying to download one of my previous talks using YouTube download, <laughs> right? Um, because there's some options with uh, both YouTube.dl or YTD uh, DL that I never remember ever. Uh, so, so this one uh, just provides some convenience flags, so I don't actually have to always look up those documentation uh, parts. So, you know, for downloading a playlist, like, how am I ever going to remember that? It'll probably be an alias, but if it's an alias, it's not going to work in all the different shells that I'll be getting in mind. All right. So, again, Mac OS drive. If I want to set up a Mac OS drive, like a USB drive to fresh install Mac OS, that's what Mac OS drive is for. If I want to download the fresh installer, Mac OS installer. All right, checksum. Uh, echo checksum. If I want the checksum of hello, boom, I'll be like that. Um, and then it supports a whole bunch of different algorithms as well. So if we want the checksum of hello and play, we're going to get a different. Um, da, da, da. TPR, things like rsync, or I think another one is like desync. So copying files from like one machine to another is also very tedious. And if it fails halfway, you can get very stressed. So CPR is like a tool to help you copy files from one machine to another. And it also supports like, depending on what you actually want to do, it'll use the correct tool for what you want to do. Uh, but we can see out of Dorothy, we've got like an alias help in Mac OS that can just have siblings, it has aliases. Uh, the third config edit, config helper, these are uh, other ones that help us with configuration files. So, config edit, this is going to help us like modifying our con, our sudo, our f tab, our keys config. 
uh, whatever. Down, oh, growing connect. <laughs> uh, if I want to download a file, I can just use down. I don't have to remember that doesn't get curl dot. I don't have to worry about them being installed. Um, and if none of them are installed, it's actually going to install our preference. <laughs> so, um, growing command. If we don't want to download something, it's fetch as well. So I could do like fetch and then just do status to get the status. So fetch that's okay to just like check whether the URL is okay. We've got all these echo commands, so these transforms. Uh, so one of the most obvious ones would probably be like echo lowercase. Um, so dot 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 echo lowercase, and then oh right, we're going to get it back to sort. One of the other things is these commands. Uh, these echo commands. Whoops. Sorry, let me make that way bigger for you guys. Uh, if I do echo hello, they also support typing as well. Uh, so it makes things way easier for easily learning uh, what it is about. Um, Neville Helper is another one, hopefully we'll see later on. Uh, let's go echo stuff. Right, so now we get an exit code of zero, and it was output, which is why we get like that. If we just do exit, it's gonna just give us whoop, exit zero, and we get it like this. Um, so, and if there is an error, we get details of the error. So this is how things like the setup system stuff, it's doing a lot of stuff in the background, but if any of it fails, we'll get to know exactly what failed and where, because it's gonna output the SDG error and give us the status code. And if everything's going smoothly, you can get brilliant, concise output like this. So, all right, set up binaries. It's done the binaries. It's just made sure that all of them are actually executable. <laughs> uh, and now it's doing utility installs. So, on my Mac Mini, I have 22 uh, utilities that has gone through and used to set up that util thing. And it's found out, yeah, they're all installed. Bash completions was installed, so it's installed it by instead. Um, SSH ASPAS was not installed. Um, I don't think it's applicable to macOS with use Utrain instead, so that would be pretty fun to that uh, For too long, didn't read, so it's going that way. And at the end, we cleaned up the system. So that's like my macOS. Everything, like Rust, uh, Homebrew, uh, dot, 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 uh, yeah, Go, uh, Ruby, uh, all of them Python, everything is just updated precisely for my preferences and make sure everything is working. Say things like uh, FFmpeg, brew, I'm going to have a horrible time when you update uh, brew or upgrade brew, and then FFmpeg always breaks. So we make sure that if you want FFmpeg, it's working correctly. Um, but yeah, that was like one command, and then in the background, we're going to update my entire system. But yeah, on a new system, instead of update, I run setup install and then do the same thing and it asks me a lot more questions. Uh, so for instance, uh, let me do it on this machine. Uh, so, so you can see the details. If I do configure, we'll get like an example of what the install experience would be like. In this case, it knows I have configuration, so some of them are pre-selected. But here I can select, okay, which one do I want to install? And it's going to save me in my configuration file. And yeah, we can see there's a lot. This menu also, this is better than like any other one that I've found because of this page. And if we do something like really cool, if I make this way smaller or change the size, uh, the page still works. Um, and if I make this bigger, it's resized. <laughs> And if I make this even bigger, whoop, and I'll make the text way smaller and make it even bigger, I'm actually going to get more hint information at the bottom because it's detected that it can fit. So I've tried like others, and even gum, like gum doesn't support this like page in the flow thing. So very cool. Um, and it supports yet more cool stuff like that. So you can build like very powerful five commands with this. Which is again how Dorothy is able to do such complex tools because we have great 
foundation commands to help us with that. All right. Um, but the books, I said a whole bunch of things, so like getting a file name or something, determining like the speed of a file system, get, getting all sorts of things, get host name, I uh, get an installer for something, get the Python version, I get the user ID, get volumes, get the book. Oh, we've got a GPG helper as well for setting up GPG if you still do that rather than SSH at the time. Um, yeah, these are other tools. See if we are, uh, are we interactive? Are we on Mac? Are we on Linux? Yeah, is the internet working? Are we on a Raspberry Pi? Put the third. Uh, yeah, set up DNS, set up DNS. Yeah, we will. Set up chorus is also a good one. So instead of like ad blocking in your web browser, a lot of time you can just block certain posts um, at your host file instead. And that's going to make sure that it's blocked. Oh, yeah. How do you manage the configuration for like multiple machines? Is yeah. All independent? Or is yeah, that would be the next okay. next point. Once we cover them. So, yeah. All right. Wait. What is this? That's going on. Is it going? I guess. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So, that's like an overview. Of, oh yeah, what is my IP? Another brilliant command. <laughs> so <laughs> let me find that out just from uh, determining what is my subnet and first name or DNS entry, things like that. What is listening? If something is like, yeah. And there is also like what is using. Like if something is failing to like turn off your machine or unmount because of something is using that path, you can do what is using or turn tell you what is using that path. So that's all the commands, uh, pretty much. Uh, I mean, not all, so like, go snip your bunch of these <laughs> all the commands. We even get into the beta commands. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, mail sync when Google Workspace was shut down. You had to move your emails from one provider to a different, for the free tier, I mean. So, mail sync uh, did that for me. Um, yeah, so da, 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 da. now, how how is all of this uh, possible? Um, what did Dorothy, what did Dorothy solve? Okay, so we will interject here to answer this question. So how does, um, did I cover this in order? I will cover, yeah, I'll go into, I'll skip ahead to chapter five and explain how it all works. And then I'll go into the commands specifically for like writing these commands. So these are all the commands that help us write commands. So for how it works, there's a little magic here uh, that allows us to have all this power and do all this nifty stuff. Is documented in like very technical detail in this readme, but I'll I'll explain it to a way, and then if anyone has questions, uh, uh, feel free to ask. So pretty much the different shells will have different init scripts, like different uh, uh, bash scripts that they, sorry, different dot file scripts that they use. So if you look into the Dorothy and then it'll be app install, uh, they all have, whoop, actually I think it'll be like bash IC. Yeah, so they have like, a Z shell RC file, DAP Z shell uh, file, um, a dot profile for dash and K shell, and they use them. Uh, Elvis uses this file, all these different things. Now, rather than extending those uh, and making only specific, it's that we just source uh, Dorothy in these files if we want to use Dorothy. So, if I do Dorothy install, uh, it will again upgrade everything. Uh, Sorry, we'll update Dorothy to make sure that it's installing a version of Dorothy that will work. Um, but we can look into if I just tap my back I see. Oh, I don't know. I see. So all it is is it just sources um, the Dorothy and it scripts specific to the API. Uh, if we do profile. It's going to do a POSIX one there because for a profile dash IC dash uh, K shell, they're all POSIX shells. Um, if we do Z shell, that's another one. Um, 
And then I think, now I don't think the others will use XDG um, for that one. So yeah, we'll just wait for that. Uh, but yeah, so it loads a little init script uh, specific to the uh, shell. And this is now going to do some very complicated stuff to figure out whether or not we actually want to learn Dorothy, uh, which is, it's not that complicated. It's complicated because it's difficult because all the shells do it differently, but it's, the idea is easy. I just want to figure out whether or not we're a login shell. What a login shell is, oh yeah, so these are all the shells that Dorothy supports. Uh, and these are the ones that I have installed. For some reason, I haven't installed this on. So you select which ones and it's going to go away and it's going to configure out uh, that little source Dorothy path to them. And then that will go into the right ones. Um, yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, so it wants to find out where, where I want to shell. So if I just run my bash and then I echo sub, uh, I need the dash here. Whoops, maybe it's that specific. Yeah, that's it. So we didn't want to load Dorothy just there when we run bash, right? We don't want to load anything from contractive shell. We don't want to load our, reload our environment variables. We just want something that runs instantly. So the way we distinguish between um, whether or not we should load when it's just like the command invocation versus when we're actually interacting with the terminal is called a login shell. When we're in a terminal, we're doing it by a login shell. Uh, so what these are doing is they're detecting whether or not they're a login shell and then whether or not they're interactive. If it's a login shell, then it's going to be close to the login configuration and if it's interactive, it goes to a bit more. Now, the login one is, We'll get like some very basic configuration uh, here. Uh, maybe this one would be better. So for for POSIX shells, it's going to silence a deprecation warning in Mac OS. Um, make sure that this time format is actually set, uh, because otherwise you get this error. And it's going to source this environment.shell file. Now this environment.shell file it figures out okay what type of shell is invoking this. Now, because this one's POSIX, so dash D shell, dash, and A shell, they're all POSIX shells. Uh, so they're going to load this with the intent of it running a POSIX shell. For fish, it's going to have a different syntax here. Help, it's going to have a different. But essentially, what it's doing is it's calling this command here set up environment commands, and then it's saying, okay, output the result to help. It. Now, if we look at set up environment commands, this is where this miracle cross shell uh, stuff happens, this automatic configuration on that shell. So what's happening here is it's making sure that our home directory, <laughs> like our home variable is actually set up. So like cron may not set the home variable, sudo may not set the home variable or the user variable. So make sure those are set up. Sets up XDG, XDG is like a convention. So rather than like in your home directory, they're being like, dot npm dot yarn dot blah 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 instead xdg is a place where it's consistent style configuration where uh like say dorothy data can go in xdg data home or like um, bins can go in bin home hash files can go in hash home and this is supported quite broadly now uh so we set up pass just at the very beginning these are the most basic ones so that now and now it's going to go through and it's going to detect the capabilities of our computer. So if we've got snap, set up the snap path. If you've got Xcode, set up the Xcode path. If we're on Windows uh, WSL, uh, it's going to make sure that it's loading the correct paths. Now it does like inherit the paths from your dash, like from your shell config ID book. But if you're on VS Code on WSL, uh, it's not going to inherit any of that environment. So here we're just pulling in the correct environment configuration. So when you're using WSL inside VS Code, your pass is still set up. You can still access the Xs. Uh, all right, homebrew Unix is the one specific to homebrew Unix. Homebrew is specific to them. Make sure that all these homebrew variables are configured correctly. Dot, dot, dot. And this is going to keep going. So Sphinx Ruby. <laughs> Uh, no, 
Python that OpenSSL uh, icon does or OP, whatever you're doing. So this is now Linux. <laughs> it's a lot easier on Linux. Uh, NVM, uh, Python, Rust, again, for Pygo. Um, Go, quite complicated there. So you can see the Go how it's working. So it's really protecting what's available in the machine, making sure that all those environment variables are completely sorted. I never have to worry about it as a user. A lot of people use Go and never have to worry. As you can see, my task is like perfectly set up for everything that I have in store. So I never have to worry about those things. Okay. Now, the way the magic that works here is if I just run set up environment plans batch, I'm not going to get any output because I haven't detected any changes that are necessary. But if it does detect changes, it will just output those changes. Um, and so, yeah. Now, I can uh, uh, add extra things to this by configuration file. So we saw earlier that it does load a environment.bat configuration file. So in my user configuration, these are things that I also want specified to my environment variable. So the Dorothy core sets up all those sensible defaults. But then here, I want my own preferences for shell check ops. So this is the only thing that I have to care about my environment variable. So all that other complexity, I don't care about the Dorothy cores anyway. This is all I need. Okay. So that's the init, the environment configuration script. Uh, so if, if, yeah, I do like for the bash part, then it's going to generate like a syntax that works in bash and just everything to that shell. Uh, so it's going to be fair to try and generate a syntax to set the environment variables on change. Um, so that's the magic way. Like that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> this also turns out to be what Starship uh, does, like, um, like the Starship uh, in it, things like that. Yeah, so you start to in that. That's going to give you a uh, dash doesn't support. So dash, same thing. It gives you like a little snippet and then you add a link. And that's how you get this cross environment support. Um, now, it would be quite boring if Dorothy was only um, our own, like it's just the Dorothy core because no one would use it. So the way it works is uh, throughout the process of loading it, uh, it will load configuration files. So for instance, uh, if it detects for an interactive shell, uh, it will let us specify, um, it will load an interactive shell configuration file we have. So when I'm using a POSIX shell, it will load contractive.sh. And then here, again, I can specify like my POSIX style aliases. So all my aliases, I still get them. I don't have to throw them all away. I can just specify them, and when I use a POSIX shell, it's going to use that. Now, on new, this is the same thing for an interactive new. Uh, I can specify my configuration for a new interactive shell. For Zont, same thing there. And for Elmish, same thing there. Um, now, the other thing that it does is if it detects it's an interactive shell, uh, yeah, so it's going to load our configuration file. and if it's not K shell and it's POSIX, if it's dash V shell, it's going to load NVM. NVM doesn't support K shell. So again, we install NVM, and then Dorothy is going to handle the loading. We don't have to modify our dot file. So that's like a consistent thing. If something tells you you need to modify a dot file, Dorothy's probably already done it for you. Um, otherwise, if it doesn't, then you just do it in your environment dot batch or you do it in your interactive uh, dot shell, wherever you want. So it loads um, some little helpers, but notably the SSH. So no matter which shell you're using, if it's fish, new shell, or a POSIX shell, your SSH agent and your GPG agent is going to be loaded correctly and shut down correctly. This is again something very tedious that few people implement correctly, and we figured out how to do it um, on all the machines. So yeah. Now, so that's the init flow. It loads the environment. Uh, Set up environment commands, outputs uh, commands that run in any shell, levels that loads our interactive configuration, then it extends our environment with that. That's the Dorothy inner process. So just that is built. So if we just install Dorothy again, just for that, that's going to make your life easier. 
plasma identifying variable signal. Um, but then uh, these other commands like setup system, things like this, these will use other type of configuration files. We can see all the configs that Dorothy makes available. So we've got autocomplete configurations, DNS configurations, uh, editors configurations, uh, get configuration, host configuration, uh, profile. So it gives us like examples of what it could be. Uh, server configuration, setup configuration. So in my setup back, so the different setup commands will then load with okay, setup back. Let's go to my user. So the setup uh, dash Linux, which uses APK, if I want to sell APK packages, I would put them there. Uh, if I want to sell app packages, I would put them there. If I want to sell snap packages, I would put them there. Go if I want the linting support, like if I'm actual Go developer, I'd change that to yes. Or Go packages, I'd put that there. So sometimes I develop uh, Go on my Mac. So then I say, is Mac? Then yeah, do install the linting. But then Dorothy's, it executes this. It's not like a JSON file. Like I can't do this if it's just a JSON file. But because it's actually executed, I can customize my configuration based on my mission. Now, so Mac app store apps that I want to do. Uh, homebrew configuration here, all the fonts that I like are saved here. Uh, put that, and so then at the end, we'll have all the setup details that we saw earlier. Now, if it does like prompt us for configuration, Dorothy will save and update these configuration files. So it knows how to update like dash variables in a dash file, which is amazing. <laughs> um, it also can update some other configuration files as well. Um, so if we look at my git dash, I prefer. Uh, okay, HTTPS and default branch main. However, that's going to probably be different um, uh, depending on the certain environment. So, config.local and commands.local. Uh, actually, before I get into that, so this is the configuration. Uh, but then commands, there's the Dorothy call, right, which is like a hundred very stable commands. Then the commands.beta, these are beta commands. So, these are added to the top. Uh, Dorothy actually prefers, uh, in the order of the path, our own user commands and our own commands. .local. So, if I was to overwrite a, I, I don't like the way that setup uh, dot hyphen works. I can just write setup hyphen and then do my own little setup hyphen, and Dorothy will call this version instead because it prefers the user commands. So, John D. Benton. Uh, he preferred certain ways of doing things, so uh, he's overwritten in his own user config a lot of the work Dorothy commands to do some of their job and stuff. Now, commands, the local ones are private commands. By default, they get ignored. For my own repository, they're encrypted with strong bonds. So these are commands that you don't want public. Um, so commands are local. Uh, these are commands specific to some pro projects. The GGNS actually has Keys and that because I was just a quick prototype uh, thing for implementing a dynamic DNS. And but for config.local, um, you can see the secrets configuration there saying config.local, I don't want that public anymore. Uh, so Dorothy does support like private configuration like out of the box. And because your user repository is a Git repository, it supports syncing across all your machines as well. So you have private configuration and syncing, you don't need a special tool for that. So that's where you are. All right. Dorothy Ember, Dorothy Cluster, Dorothy approach. Yeah, so the Dorothy approach to promotion. So, like one of his suggestions was with Rust, or you like how in the Rust ecosystem there was a proposal where third party packages that are very commonly used should be maintained collectively and funded collectively. Uh, so, you don't end up with 100 implementations of or you have like one blessed package that does it. So the promotion way in Dorothy is quite easy. It starts off with a user command, and then if other users use it, then it moves into the beta. And then once it's stable, and we know that people like it, a wider thing, then it moves into normal commands. And, and also once it's stable, then it moves into normal commands. So the desire here is again, implement it once and then roll it out to everybody once it's stable. Uh, and it's working like really well. So one of the upcoming commands is uh, Jalma. Uh, he 
as we've been working on directing new commands to scaffold new directing commands very easily. I ask you a bunch of questions, and then create some. It's not ready yet for plan time, so it's still in his user repository. But then over this week and next week, uh, I've been working, well, this week I've been working on it. <laughs> next week I will be working on it more, uh, bringing it into commands.beta. So it's kind of like, like a dev branch in commands.beta. So his command is being promoted because it's a great idea. Um, and he's got other set of utils, and you know, if other people use those utils, they'll just get promoted. So again, hopefully there'll be like hundreds or thousands of these utils. Uh, so we never have to worry about it uh, ever again. Like just set up dash util dash uh, stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's the operation of Jarky. Those are like the commands for Jarky. So the next part of this talk. Uh, will be more on um, now developing or scripting of Dorothy. So I think in terms of the, the what we've covered so far, it's just like as a user of Dorothy, in which case it's like pretty big for this automatic configuration. You don't have to worry about that. It works in all the different environments. So just installing Dorothy and selecting it to be configured for your shell, you get that benefit. Then there's the other one that you get all these commands to help you with your machine and interaction with the machine. Finding out what your IP is, what is my IP, right? Setting up your system, uh, those ones. And then third is you can then have that configuration and private configuration sync. So as a, a user of Dorothy, like those three key, key things is just amazing. <laughs> and it allows me like to go from, I get my need or reinstall this Mac, I just do set up dash system install and then everything's sorted. If I get a new Mac, or when I'm doing a Raspberry Pi, so whatever it is, or even a risk five board, it's just going to work in all my configurations. So as a user of Dorothy, I think those three things is like a really good sell. Um, but then there's also becoming a author of Dorothy, so writing your own commands as well. Uh, so that's what uh, we're going to focus on for the next uh, hour of this talk, uh, which is installing Dorothy and then writing a command. We've got two options for a command. Uh, well, actually, there's three, because there's three types of commands. Uh, there's generic commands, which would be like set up system, check some, things like that. Uh, these are commands that take arguments and does operations, like execute something. There's transformers. These are things that take an input and transform it into a different output. Those are the echo commands, like echo lowercase. And then there's the installers, which are the set up utility. So there's three types of commands in Dorothy. Uh, for the most immediate one that would get you like feeling cool <laughs> uh, would be writing a setup dash util and so on. So finding something that you want to install and just making a setup dash util dash whatever it is and install on top. So find something to install off the directory and then just write that setup util one. Otherwise, you could do a, a echo one and uh, we'll cover that. But the other one is, yeah. We can also install Dorothy. But before we get to that, um, I can cover the experience of uh, writing commands in Dorothy before we start the actual hands on uh, part of working on it. So I'm just letting you know what's to come. So, by a show of hands, who thinks you're going to like, play with Dorothy? So, Dorothy does have a trial mode. So, you don't actually have to. Uh, load it in every new instance of your shell. You can do a trial mode where you run a specific command just like this. So this one's running the echo for ghost command. Or you can start a replica, in which case you don't have to do this huge prefix. You can load in an interactive shell and then you can write on the Dorothy commands like that. So you don't have to commit to running like just installing Dorothy right now. You can just play with Dorothy. It's not going to modify your job files. It's going to go into a specific environment that has all the Dorothy loaded. You can see if it's a good fit for you. But then, if you do think it's a good fit or you're already sold, you can just run this command. <laughs> and then that's going to go away and walk you through the process. So, who thinks they're going to try Dorothy uh, or install Dorothy? All right. So, we do have some sales. So. <laughs> um, so, that's cool. Um, and then, by then, who's going to want to write some commands with it and or the configuration. Right? Probably the same people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
So then for the others, uh, I guess you can just watch what, what I cover, how it's like watching a Python command or you may get out of issue of the edge when you want to uh, write some commands with it. And then also, I want to hear like why you wouldn't install many of these things that can do better uh, with the project. So, so for running a command with Dorothy, uh, let's just go through uh, the process. So again, that Dorothy new command, it's not there yet. It'll probably be there next week or so. So let me go into my user and let me write a command and it would be, I don't know, uh, my example, oh no, there's already one called that. We call it address. All right, so these days I just copy something else that's very simple that does kind of what I want uh, and put it here. Now it's a new file, you know, you need to make it executable. So it'll be Dorothy and then P for like permissions or you can write permissions. And that's gonna make sure that all our commands are actually executable. Um, while it's doing that, uh, we can go through and do this. So the basic of, the basis of a command in Dorothy is, yeah, the usual uh, shebang at the top, and then we say this one is written in batch, and then we use a function that's a subshell function. This means that like if I do a export or whatever is here, it's not going to leak outside this function. Uh, this allows us to sometimes source functions. So there's certain functions that we want to source. So sometimes there'll be source and then we'll see probably type. Yeah. So if someone's like, it will help us. Sometimes we don't just want to run these commands on another command. We actually want to run them on the function. So then here I would source it will helper. And now it will helper is running on correct permissions, which is using underscore. So it's a communicate function. So I can actually run uh, certain Dorothy commands on functions, which if it was a command, it can do it with a different address to that function, but without polluting the environment. So this is like the base. So commands, uh, they will have either dash and functions we use underscores. It's an important distinction because dash handles functions differently than commands with error handling. Uh, there is a documentation for errors. <laughs> and the next half of this is some very detailed, yeah, this gotcha explains what the gotcha is. Uh, but this source of dash uh, also gives us some very sensible defaults for interacting with that. We get like some little aliases because echo can sometimes be make misunderstand what you're passing it. Um, and we also make sure that uh, we check like which dash version is actually running because again Mac OS uses dash version 3 by default now. Uh, and it enables certain uh, uh, sensible uh, defaults uh, for scripting. And if we, for instance, require a last byte, then I can call last byte and if it's like doesn't have it, then it's all to upgrade back. So if this command that I'm writing uses last byte, I can require last byte and scratch it. But the main magic here is this like this little evil capture um, bit, which is more like advanced, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in here so that if something fails, it fails immediately. It doesn't like continue executing, which is like the default for shell scripting. And if a command fails, most shells will just continue. Unless you do like a exit dump and then you'd be like, yeah, exit one, something like this. So yeah, my failed command. You have to do like an all exit on all the time. But luckily, this little batch that fixes that. So let's go over that first one and we'll say, all right, ask, uh, so local, uh, who, and we'll say who, dot, 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 uh, dot, 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 ask, and dot, 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 uh, question, uh, who are you? Okay. Echo. 
Yep, who are you? What's your value? Yeah. Hello again. So that's how we get text inputs. Now we can say local color and say color equals form, form, form. There is option, and we will then do a question. Oh, what is your is this big enough? Like the text? Is your friend color? Uh, and then for purple, let's say green, red, blue. And we'll say blink as well. <laughs> um, okay. So then we can say echo style color font. Whoops, that finished. All right, then. then all right, let's go green. Hello, Ben in green. All right, now if test color equals green, then confirm positive. All right, dot dot dot. All right, keep the ID dot dot dot. All right. Uh, Four, four, four. Else, actually, let's do it this way. Echo style, four, 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 and we'll say, notice, good choice. <laughs> All right, return zero, five, five, and we'll continue. Whoop, continue down here. All right, so these are going to be the main. Forms of input. So, who are you? Jen, let's now go blink. Are you sure? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. And our hello, Jen, is green. So, this is the main ways. Now, let's say I wanted to get multiple colors here. I can just pass multi. Uh, and let's say we want the default to be red and we want another default to be blink. Now, this is now going to be an array, so I'll change the other colors. And I need a zoom difference here, which will be uh, choose option. Let's look for multi. <laughs> um, all right. I don't want, wait, right, not five. Dot, dot, dot. Color, full color in all colors do four, four, four. Right. All right, then see now we've got some defaults, and we can see it's now check boxes instead. And we do red, blue, hello, Ben, hello. All right, so just some basic dash there. Uh, and it's all working great. Now, let's just change this to be something that's going to cause a problem. Whoop, wrong command. <laughs> all right, enter value then. Let's select this one here. All right, we got a failure, we got the exit code. This is great. Let's see what happens if we don't include the bash attack. What is the default bash stuff here? Okay, same thing. Oh, probably because uh, that was the last one. So if we say echo okay. now we can uh, right then. Uh, form, form. Okay, form. Yep, see, okay. I'm figuring this out, no one else has figured this out. <laughs> How to get that to actually uh, handle this stuff. Um, so this is like a, a basic generic command uh, style for getting for asking inputs, uh, processing things. Another example is if you're going to clone, clone Dorothy, we've got this like beta example generic command. So this is a more typical of something more 
uh, that you have. So this st structure will be an arguments block. You have the help and a little description of the command, a usage, some options. And here we've got a Boolean option. So Boolean, uh, so if we run this, so example generic command, if I do help, it's gonna help with the help. If I do, uh, if I just run it without anything, you'll see everything is like empty. If I do Boolean, this is now gonna be true or yes. If I do equals no, it's gonna be no. If I do no Boolean equals no, it's gonna be yes, <laughs> right? Um, string, suck, right? That's gonna work. Multi-string, so I've got multi-string one, multi string two. We're going to get to three parts here. All right, R will just be like the first thing that is in the flag. But if we do two, it's going to error because it's realized, hey, this command it only supports one single argument. However, this command it does support variable arguments. So I can mention with shell, it's just two dashes and I have an unlimited amount of arguments because otherwise it's very hard to tell, right? Like whether or not dash dash A right, is an actual argument or a flag that you broke, right? So you use this double dash to run. And so the example command will show you, uh, like you can just copy and paste this from your argument generic command and this is then the convention. So, no Boolean, we work it like this. So no Boolean and then a little star, so that's like a, a pattern matching there. Uh, and then get flag value, this is gonna extract the flag value uh, and then echo formula based on, uh, yeah, what's, it's gonna convert like yes uh, into no. So if I write like Boolean, no, it's gonna know that no means no, false means false. No Boolean means false. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we can look at uh, yeah, echo formula. Um, and what is this uh, called? So, all right. One input is affirmative. All right, is affirmative. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. So that's all the things that are licensed. Um, and then, yeah, if they do something that is not um, a good thing, for example, SD, we're going to get the content. Uh, so, strings um, for the life of me, this is the way we fetch, easily fetch strings. I mean, this is very easy if you want to change this to something else, right? If you just want to change that to name, you know, just like the part that says string. What that does is it just say, String is string equals part from the the argument. Multi string, same thing, but we're just using an array. So it's an array rather than a string, and we add the same thing to the array. For yeah, the the example from last lesson, the big part of the lesson part of the lesson is to provide documentation of the example. Yeah, yeah. So in the future, the dog for you, it's gonna like ask you questions. Like it's gonna be like. Do you want to process arguments? Uh, and they'll say yes, and they'll be like, what is the domain argument? The first domain argument you want. If you don't want any, just press enter. So like it's in progress, uh, and it's gonna make this easier. For now, this would be like the reference. Yeah. Um, so for variable arguments, this is the way you do it. Um, and then for the first arguments, you do it like that. If you want the second one, press LF, and then it would be uh, the second, right? So we're just checking whether or not uh, when we get like something that we don't know, is it like has the first argument been set? If not, set it. If the second argument has been set, if not, set it. Right. Um, but if you don't care, then yeah, just talk like that. And now our command will support um, that at all. So, so you can just remove the bits you don't care about. Then this is like the way to add it. So we have to know echo style, which is one of the main. Yeah. But I mean, there's hundreds of commands in Dorothy, so you can just like find one that does what you want and just take it um, until that new one is done. And the new one, I'm actually planning on like holding 
like some AI service, like automatically like help you answer the questions yeah. based on the feedback you've already done. Some commands um, will have checks uh, as well. Um, so we do have, let's say, complete helper. Uh, complete helper test. So if I run complete helper test, Dorothy has tests. Was able to test uh, these commands and make sure that the one is producing the correct SDR, the correct SD error, the correct status code. Uh, this is how Dorothy is able to do very steady. Um, the tests are not up to everything, um, but maybe it's in commands now, like the ones which like have broken before and they're right. the test uh, now. So, um, so yeah, there is like a testing framework within Dorothy. Um, okay, and that testing framework is just every tester. And like everything, probably 90% of the commands now have a help. Um, and yeah, you can just search on, on how it works. So, all right. Uh, yeah, complete. Yeah. All right, so I was answering the yeah, your question. Right. Um, so what else uh, do we have? Okay, confirm for me, lowercase. Yeah. So if I was to go back to our plant.js command uh, and let's say I want to make sure that they don't uh, they're not yelling, then I can be like, uh, who don't. Actually, I don't even do that. I can just pipe this to echo lowercase because it supports piping and all this. Um, so, bom, bom, bom. Uh, da, 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 command. Right, it's a value then. Oh, <laughs> we still got that. Ah, okay. oh, there we go. Oh, standard in. Uh, so by default, it's going to look for items if there wasn't anything immediately to standard in, right? Because you don't want to be waiting for it just for standard in if you call it the zero items, but your intent is to process items. So the transformers, uh, you pass standard in to whenever you're actually piping, the store is passed standard in, so it's no, it's not going to like and process and items. As someone getting started, this is thing, I would find that like if it's something not working, like what? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've got a Discord, ask in the Discord. Um, but there is like good up to date documentation. I mean, it's not like to the level of React or anything like that. But yeah, we've got good documentation here. Um, so Bash, like these are all like different ways of coding in Bash if you want to code in Bash. But again, like John Penton, who just writes a new shell, he likes new shell. Some of the commands in Dorothy are actually here. Uh, because it was just the correct solution. So in Dino, there's some commands, most of the commands are written in Bash, but some commands are written in Z shell, some commands are written in Dino. Um, so research like Dino, uh, we're going to see like a few different commands written in Dino. So if you want to write your commands in Dino, go ahead. Does <laughs> um, that mean so. there is dependency on Dino even if you don't use those commands? Uh, no. Uh, so there is like some very core dependency just for running the core. But if we check out like drill install, uh, Dino script does. So here, there will be a setup util Dino. So only if it's going to invoke Dino, then I say setup util Dino client. So that's going to make sure uh, Dino is installed for that. Uh, and it's going to do so quietly because it's just a dependency. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's great. So like other examples of that would be like, like different tools, like we're calling different tools like with these utilities, like SD instead of set or rip rep instead of rep, uh, that or things like this. So a lot of times you'll see like this little setup util quiet and then it's going to, yeah, so setup util BGFS, obviously BGFS helper, check some, it's going to install this one. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Uh, yeah, so that's the way we install dependency, we write the installer for it. So, so it would only install Dino if you executed the command that needed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, uh, so. Uh, yeah, okay. So 
we call it generic commands, the example one, and then that MJS command. So that's a generic uh, command, taking arguments, processing them, uh, executing things, not necessarily doing an output. So the other type of command is going to be uh, a transform. These are these echo ones, echo lowercase is like an example of this. So we could use that. So let's check this one out. So instead of sourcing dash, well, dash for sourcing standard in R's for dash. And this one, for instance, uh, we write our help and then options. We also call here, or we inject the standard options help as well. So if we go at the lowercase, help, we're going to get that detail. And that is standard in, right? Um, and say no standard in if we only want to process arguments. So whenever we're writing a transformer, these are all the things that standard in R is that file we source these as. So we can specify the timeouts. Uh, we can specify where or not we care about inline lines. So these are lines that, like, if your file doesn't have the trade the last line, then that's an inline. Some commands want to discard the final line if it doesn't have trailing, and some commands want to keep it. It depends on the, what you're trying to do. Um, so, for instance, like if you're going to output something like a prompt, you don't want to have like a trailing line there and things like that. Um, so, some of the, the other ones, they're actually going to have a set arguments and things like that in the release, like how to do your uh, work. You're going to process in this one, you get a little bit more into the work. So, I go check some of the example of this. Uh, same deal, um, but we also accept an algorithm argument, but it's still just giving us the, uh, the standard in ones. And then we have algorithms, so we do a go check some, uh, a go drop, help, uh, we're going to get the, um, the help, and we're going to see uh, how the algorithm and the two ones. Algorithms here that it's automatically get generated, and this one gives us like some examples on usage. Okay, so this is also a very good one to kind of uh, start with. Uh, but echo lowercase, like most of the time, you don't need to customize your transformation, right? You just you already know the transformation you want to do. So, one input is like for any input, whether it's stand, uh, standard in or whether it's an argument. If we just want to do arguments, then it'll be like function on R. Well, actually, yeah, on arg, if you want to care about it, there's like function on standard in. Um, if we want just the line, the line or any line as well. And there's also on finish, if we want to do something when it's all wrapped up. But once it's finished, it's standard in. And then at the end, we just call standard in arg, and we call it, give it all the commands that we've been processing above. So for instance, this one that hasn't done anything with those commands, where the checks on, Echo checksum, it did do things with commands. So, what it did was it um, cycled through all the commands, uh, I'm sorry, all the arguments, and anything it doesn't know, it just puts into this args array, and then it forwards that args array to standard ones. Okay? So, very powerful. Like, to figure that out and do it properly is also like really, really cool. So, it's got like a whole bunch out here. Not all of these are like transforms, so like echo style, that's not true. Um, but most of these are going to be free transforms. So a good little resource there for our transform echo URL to code. I think, <laughs> yeah, so echo URL to code. To do this in Dash is like a real pain. So this one is like detected, hey, is Dino installed? Use Dino <laughs> to encode the URL, right? Is Node installed? Use Node to do it. PHP, use PHP, use Python 3, right? And if none of them are installed, Go and store them in that preference of what it can. Like if Dino fails, it's going to try Node. If Node fails, it's going to try PHP. Is there a way to tell not to like you know Dino doesn't have PHP or Python installed or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. So just like go here, yeah, but then you'll just be like echo error. I mean, like these simple kid types, like you know, using URL code. Um, not so much. I I mean, you could send a pull request and that would be cool. <laughs> but I mean, like. Like, uh, it's more, well, I guess it's like a, you know, if one will realize that it is going to do something, then they can do this instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, your goal is to encode the URL. Yeah, if you want to achieve that goal. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the, the transform that's just using standard in the um, This is 
public and that in docs. Uh, there is so yeah, that uh, this is all guys like working with that, right? So conditional is like the test and that's red. Um, what is the subshell? Why do we use that? Trading lines, how do we like read things like that? Oh yeah, so the default, right? To read standard, it will be something like this. And this is like so eloquent. So this is all like chucked away just to be confident on the Yeah. <laughs> right? And it has arguments as well. <laughs> <laughs> and timeouts and all the rest. Uh, so like I think a cool one is like echo wait. Uh, okay, this one doesn't use standard at all. But um, there's one called like spun, and sometimes like when you're piping like say curl to something, then like the pipe writes because curl exited before it finished writing it. Um, and in which case, like the next command hates that. So like sometimes if you do that, you just like pipe to echo away and then just keep going. Um, yeah. So da, da, da. so yeah, the dash won't give us all these tips for working with dash uh, and with that docs. Uh, new shell gives us tips for working with new shell. Uh, Dorothy just teaches us about Dorothy and what this house which you in the first part. Uh, showcases other like yeah, common ways you can do commands. Uh, about scripting, this is the whole thing about how that works. Yeah. Is the, the context in which um, Dorothy Dash is this is that in like the source mode as a whole? Yeah, yeah. So that's essentially what this dash for dash that we saw. So that's when you need to do Yeah, yeah. But it's not on your interactive shell, right? Like, like your interactive shell doesn't want, want to crash when you have to max it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why, like, we also use a sub shell. Uh, like, the, the convention here is a sub shell, right? So when we saw this dash for dash, it's only like doing the strict mode in this function, like the sub shell function. So when I source a CPI, if I need to call a function, like when we source a help or any test, like it's not changing um, the other command, right? It's only going to do that in this context. Yeah. So also very cool. Um, yeah, it is the hierarchy of these uh, commands and the dependencies between hierarchy of these to this other command. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this safe mode is actually one that works. <laughs> so again, it's like something that uh, no one, uh, has figured out, and I mean, you can see why, because uh, this is this is like the little magic, uh, like here to like make sure that like we catch errors, because there's like this very specific use case again. It's in the errors marker, where like if you're now if this is a, a command, sorry, a function, and then we do any type of conditional, then it completely disables like the set dashi. I get her exit, and there is no way to turn that off. And the dash people think this is by design. The closets people think this is by design. This is how closets are meant to run. Functionally, that's something I want. Okay. Because I want to be able to do error handling. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, it's like you want the error handling for your code, but it disables error exit for the code inside that function. I'm not executing functions, I'm executing commands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So commands is fine, but functions, they disable error exit. So what the dash for dash does is it's figured out an amazing way to make sure that it still works. And that was probably one of the happiest <laughs> coding days of this year when I figured that out. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, you get a dash for dash that actually works. You get shins also if it's running in dash three, it's gonna add like a map file shim. So this is also something else if you like call map file and dash three it's gonna fail because it doesn't have it. Uh, but yeah, I figured out how to do map file <laughs> uh, and dash three. So it's gonna like this give us the stuff we need to do. Um, yeah, and we can check like the right compatibility. So it's gonna give us some really good version, um, things like that. And we can still also see like uppercase, first slide, lowercase. These like are different based on the different dash um, so yeah, so that's the sourcing uh, for the main stuff. Uh, so uh, docs, uh, da, 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 da. Um, shells, yeah. So how to do different things, uh, styling, how to use the styling stuff, supporting new shell if you want to add support for a different like login shell. Um, but yeah, commands. If we go all the way down here, um, yeah, types we got generics. We covered that installers uh, and customers. We covered transformers then. The next one is installer, and it's recommending that we take a look at 
So, and I think, yeah, we looked at this at the beginning. So, this is like the easy one to fill. We just say, like, all the different kinds of input systems that, that supports that. Um, there'll be other ones where you'll see things like app repo. Um, so, here, uh, one password by at app key, app repo, and this is one that works correctly. And it's going to use the appropriate way of adding that repo based on what version of apps you're using. Um, and then this is like another format here, uh, DNF repo. So there's plenty of commands you can find out how to do it. And then some of them, like if it's a Rust uh, tool, it generally will publish um, a whole bunch of assets on the GitHub releases. In which case, you'll see like a little thing in free performance here. So we just check whether or not, in this case, BTM, so Boston's file, uh, is already installed. And if that's all we're wanting to do, if we just want to install Boston, then like it turns it off for you. So that's just some complicated thing because otherwise, it's going to have to do a lot of requests to GitHub to find out what it supports. So if it's going to do an uninstall or an install, if it's not already installed, then we start going to GitHub to find out what it supports. So this is also how Dorothy installs a uh, bash version five on um, Mac if you don't have Homebrew installed. We're not going to install Homebrew unless you absolutely <laughs> need it. And even then, I don't think there's ever going to be a case where we install Homebrew because everything supports all those peripheral things. So for that, in this case, we have a little, so here we're going to be sourcing setup tool because we want set up util to be able to call this function. And this function is actually going to build batch. And the building will be for risk five. So in this case, uh, on Mac OS, it's probably just going to download uh, the asset directly from the release um, if it doesn't have the root. And then if the asset fails, whatever, it will build it. So I'd say there isn't an asset for risk five, so we're just going to build it. So, Really powerful there, right? Like, no other package system does, not even T does this, right? So, I didn't mind setting up until batch and it, it runs everywhere. Um, and then everyone else gets to use that. So, so this is the other type of detail. So, uh, yeah, those are the different commands, and, and that little doc uh, part will, will go into um, that command stop markdown. So, it will say, okay, if you're going to write install, what's going to have? Place a lock with uh, If you're going to write a transformer, probably base it off log base. If you're going to write a generic base it off example log command. Um, but yeah, soon there's going to be a dot view, and it's just going to ask you a whole bunch of questions and go for it. So, yeah. Uh, so, with that, uh, yeah, to, to install it uh, and get started, um, it would be this command here. Uh, or it would be if you just want to try it, maybe just run it off. Um, and then I'll leave it over to you. <laughs> uh, and I'll end the talk here and I'll throw it to you to get started. So, yeah, so that's it. Uh, and any more questions, any feedback, just want to make it. So, it's interesting. Really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, I guess this is kind of a pseudo question because I thought it was. Yeah. What was a dot file ecosystem? Yeah. Did you have to sell any of this? This is impressive for files. Um, so right now, <laughs> sponsors. <laughs> uh, well, my goal, I mean, like, again, it's like we talked earlier about like maintaining open source that you don't care about. But like, my targeting for packages, 90% of them I don't will ever use, right? Which is just why we don't have many releases. Majority I use every single day. And it's written in a way that I can write something once and then it's good. But we can see like uh, that little contributing thing. Like this is each time there was like, okay, another user's gone on board and I've adjusted it. And now Dorothy is like V1 essentially. Like there's no versions of Dorothy, but it's like V1 is now ready for like mass adoption. Um, and it's like something which like the people who use it, they use it every single day. They love it, they depend on it for all these reasons. So. It's, um, I guess I, I initially thought it might have been some reason to just give more room for like a new soul or something like that. Just to manage it. Yeah. Like, your own collection of you know, contributors to do that. Yeah. This is, this is like a comprehensive developer, like across environment 
develop a distribution full in affordance so that when normalization is happening, and this like things that are bringing consistency to the ocean shore and discovery of the region to shell environments for start has historically been quite hostile. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, exactly. Like these people, like my Alma was more like he's a musician, <laughs> right? And now, like this is his first like proper experience with Krypton. He was like falling in love. I'm not sure what, uh, uh, yeah, John Benton stuff is like. Yeah, they're like they're writing and it's really it's, it reminds me of Doc Bat, the static site generator. Where they, like Doc Bat was a lot of people's introduction to web comics to make web comics easy. When Dorothy makes an interactive movie, he does music, like things that would otherwise be impossible unless you're one of the few experts in the world for it in that situation. Right? Like that's something that few people know. So I think like I'm one of the few people on the planet that knows how to do these certain things. Like it's really normal. Um, so I think, yeah, it, it, over time, I think it's just going to grow organically and then people will use it for our own sponsoring and help them. Um, so, and I think we are. And so, like that set of utility, that's like sort of made, like, yeah, there's, there's these three aspects to it. There's like automatic configuration, sharing the configuration, and then there's ecosystem of commands, right? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's this crazy um, cycle. I do I do test people in installation in like the project that I have. So, yeah, I just like the main or main or this is my or my happy area that I'm installing. Yeah. And then platform to platform, we did a lot. Yeah, this is yeah a great question. Login shells will have logins. Yeah, so this will like do the app build install process, like that little install process from the readme, and like yeah, make sure everything's configured, and it's going to make sure that all these different shells are actually loading Dorothy correctly and actually running like a Dorothy command uh, successfully. Um, and then Homebrew Mac OS. This is. Testing for a Mac OS that has Homebrew installed, whether it's going to work fine, because if Homebrew is installed, then Bat 5 is installed. But fresh Mac OS, you don't have Homebrew, you just have Bat 3. Very different. And yeah, we test it and make sure it works. Um, and then, yeah, the one tip for Dog, you're doing Alpha and Jar and Open Source, uh, Leap and Tumbleweed and Tally. We test everything. And the test, uh, we saw that, yeah, some commands have tests. Um, I've alias Dorothy for just D, <laughs> um, but yeah, if I run DT or, or Dorothy test, it's going to run those tests for every single thing. So, like, for instance, is integer. It turned out that it was like, like yeah, there's is integer, there's e decimal or e digit, right? So, they kind of like handle things a little bit differently. So, that's like making sure that it's working correctly. Um, uh, yeah. And on this computer, because it's Mac, it knows that. It's going to test it in batch five and it's going to test it in batch three as a Mac user. Um, so every command here is going to be tested in both. This is like testing now on confirm, making sure that it's interacting correctly and everything. So the test now, like the really comprehension, are on all these different buckets. Um, and now I like I develop in a different branch, I suit the test class, and then I push it to master. Um, and that's made it like again for like easy one to save when you're like ready for the master project. The other thing is, if you want to contribute, there's Dorothy to do this. <laughs> and these are, are going to see like what has tests, what has the to do comment. This one has no help. This one doesn't have the subshell wrap, right? So we're going to find out like if you ever want to just, you know, you're feeling comfortable and you want to start uh, helping contribute to the call, not these are. <laughs> so, and these are like very basic things, like no subshell wrap. This means like you want to run for help, add some help text. Right? Yeah. I have one more subjective computer performance from last night. And yeah. there is Dorothy uh, with support for the Bat language server. The Bat language server? Uh, I don't know, I've never heard of it before. However, if you can jump to Bat and work with the ship in Bat, you know. Oh, okay. And then from, and then from the CD. Yeah. So uh, a month ago, Homebrew uh, pushed some update to the back order completions or something, uh, and it completely void order completion. Luckily, there's another project called Paraplace, um, which is a uh, is not again, it's not installed on my. Um, what's this called? 
set up not so well. Why is that? Oh, then I want to know about that. Why <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, set up your tool carapace. Now the order completes. Um, before we used to like manually do the order completes um, based on what the environment had. But then, yeah, it turns out now there's a Rust tool called Carapace. Uh, and it supports like all the different shelves. Uh, so some of them will see that the Gen Z shelf is still GitHub profile tried, but uh, characters doesn't support that. So we're still worrying about directly. So again, it's like order detecting. We're order detecting if we need to worry about the completion in any way. So again, very like Dorothy esque uh, way. Um, and then, yeah, if Carapace is installed, then we use Carapace. So now, like, if I do dash dash L, I'm going to get. Uh, yeah, test by day. <laughs> Maybe let's let's like I don't know. Uh, LS. I don't know. Four, four, four. Maybe I should have tested that a little bit more. But at least uh, it, it is going to be loading for um, for dash using characters. Um, maybe I needed to do something a little bit different or then maybe just mess it up in the order control. Oh, it could be job. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, the work completes uh, will do that. Another like example of where we've like delegated things is like Android File. And this is like another good example where like if that is installed, then we use that. Otherwise, we use that. Um, so, if you've got that installed, you don't get work on this or anything like that. And so, Android File will be. I don't guess any way in this, but if that is installed, you're not going to get that. That is so. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so the Dorothy to do this is, is a good example <laughs> of things to mark off. Um, and yeah, otherwise, there's uh, the yeah, so the next week, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be supporting the default values and ask, which is our tech. Text input, like what is your name? So then I could say default uh, day. Uh, this is going to be useful for the command order completed because it's like, what do you want to call your command? And then make the default echo that if you select it, you're going to be transformed or set up until right, you're going to be out of the initial value. Um, so it's always improving, but like that true name stuff, like this is just amazing. Um, yeah, so it's also like probably the best free source on Dash on the internet as well, <laughs> to be honest. What's that implemented in the other countries? The what? The Dash. Yeah, Dash. That's all Dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, choose menu and choose option. Uh, they're going to be merged into the same command, but right now, the reason why they're different is because, like, choose option, if I select Dash, uh, okay, I did choose menu, right? So it's going to be zero. Um, so if I do, okay, choose a menu, and then I say multi, and then I just do A, 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 right? And I select all of these, zero, one, two, okay? But if I do choose option, uh, then I'm going to get A, A. However, in hindsight, I should have just called it choose, and then just done like index. <laughs> Um, so when I do do that change, I just move the implementation, like the one I get rid of, into beta, and then or I get commands that deprecated, and then so it will still work, uh, but I'll just be clear that that is not the motion to just choose option um, instead. Um, but yeah, so choose menu and like yeah, it's kind of really cool. So if we make something like do we want? <laughs> Right, let me do right. Uh, all right, so that's on the next page. <laughs> and check it out, it's like indented like correctly. Um, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's probably the best resource in Dutch. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, so that's uh, yeah. We got five minutes left. Uh, I'll help you install it. Uh, and we'll end there unless there's anything else to do on the recording.